scientific facts of the Bible. Little book, powerful messages. Listen to this. This book is nothing but teaching people who don't believe in the Word of God why the Word of God was true and the scientists are only just figuring it out. Listen to it, right? Praise God, right? Listen, listen to this one. There's so many here I want to share, but listen to this one. Encyclopedia Britannica documents that in 1845, a young doctor in Vienna, his name was Dr. Ignaz Samuel Weiss. He was, for, he was horrified at the terrible death that women were dying after childbirth. So, Samuel Weiss noted that doctors would examine the bodies of patients who died. Then, without washing their hands, they'd go straight to the next ward and begin examining expecting mothers. Mmm, all the mamas know, right? <laughs> this was the normal practice because the presence of the microscopic diseases at that time was unknown. Well, Simmel Weiss insisted from that point on, doctors washed their hands before each examination, and the death rate immediately dropped to 2% from 30%. Think of this. That's why the guys couldn't get anywhere. The women were dying. <laughs> look, at the, look at the specific instructions now that God gives thousands of years ago. Hey, guys, go ahead and uh, get ready to throw this one up just so everybody will see it. Get ready for Leviticus 15, 13. And when he that has an issue is cleansed of his issue, then he shall number to himself seven days for his cleaning, washing his clothes, bathe in the flesh with and in running water. <laughs> and then you shall be clean. Good. You said good. Until recent years, doctors washed their hands in a bowl of water, leaving invisible germs in their hands. Having the Bible now tells us very specifically that's why we're supposed to wash our hands on the running water. God said it. We eventually figured it out. But today we have to be so careful because too many people think they have all got God figured out. And as soon as we think we've got him figured out, he goes, ha, watch this. Praise God. So, little good stuff like this. If you have a cell phone right now, please do yourself a big fat favor and turn it off. Because if it goes off, I'm going to answer it and I'm going to talk about you and they will cancel all your credit cards. <laughs> the pastor was on the pulpit one day and he's interrupted by the sound coming from somewhere in the audience. <laughs> Mary, Mary, please, wake up your husband, he's sleeping. And she says, you wake him up, you put him to sleep. <laughs> Give God a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So as we're going to begin to get into the word of understanding, this is interesting. You cannot apply what you don't understand. You cannot apply what you don't understand. We lock up guns. We put caps in the little electricals. The children can't touch the plugs. Why? They don't understand electricity, right? How do you know how to apply what you can't understand? From this. I have to borrow a line that Brother Simon and I used a few weeks ago at a funeral. B-I-B-L-E. B-I-B-L-E. If you don't understand the owner's manual, how can you apply it? How? Come on, how? Basic instructions before leaving earth. B-I-B-L-E. The owner's manual. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Because if you don't understand it, how do you apply it? How? We're here for Christmas. We praise the Lord. Happy birthday. But everybody knows Jesus wasn't born in December, right? They think roughly October-ish, something like that, right, Papa? Something in the ballpark. It doesn't matter. The point is, God is so specific. If he wanted us to know the date, he would have told us, right? 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 
The problem is the same reason that we can't find Moses' body and we don't know the day Jesus was born because maybe we begin worshiping that day. We worship the day, we worship the day instead of the deliverer. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Bow your heads. Father God, we praise your name in the name of Jesus. We love you. We worship you. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise. Lord, I just thank you that you would use me in some way to speak through, just talk through, just lead through in whatever capacity I can just be available to speak your word of truth from this very place that you reign. And Father, please bless the hearers, bless the people to be good listeners, to avoid the distractions of the cares of life in the world or whatever it may be that is all going on outside those doors. Give them a peace and a clarity of mind so they can hear your word. You can penetrate into their mind through the, into the soul and deeply, Lord, touch them, touch them. When they leave, they will leave different than they came. Do not let them leave the same way they came. But let them become bigger in you, more in love with you, more aware of you, better understanding of you. And I praise you, God, at all of this. And we say, everyone, in the name of Jesus, everyone prays, amen? Amen. 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 Everyone says amen. amen. Okay, if you brought your Bibles, please, let's get ready to open them. We're going to be going through a lot of it. Uh, brother, I, you know, brother, you are, let me say, who do you think is the number one person during a service? Not Jesus Christ, he is always. Who do you think is the number one person of importance during a service? Anyone know? Number one? The sound man. Right in the middle of the anointing in the presence of God. What was that? Shut that thing up. You see? He's number one. You, who do you think is number two? The worship leader. And who do you think on the worship team is the number one person? The drummer. I'm serious. If you don't understand the B-I-B-L-E, the basic instructions before it leaves the earth, you don't realize that God always used the drums what led the cadence for Israel to move. Drums led the cadence. Why drums? Because the thundering sound of the drum drives away demon force. That's the point. So that's why the drums are very, very powerful. And uh, I thought I came this morning very early because I thought I was going to play. Uh, the young man who normally plays was on vacation. I said, great, I'll play. And then I came in, and Brother Isaiah was on the drums. I said, no, I'll play. He goes, no, I'm going to play. Drummers fight for their seat. <laughs> they fight for their seat. And I knew, oh, it's okay. I got way too much experience as a 50-year drummer. I, <laughs> go, boy, go. And, man, I hugged him in the back. I said, I love you, brother. You are amazing. So Isaiah, you were amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. The pastor is like, oh, down here. Right there. You got it? But he is the lead shepherd. He is the lead shepherd. Of what? Oh, Elijah, you changed it? Elijah, your name is Elijah now, okay? It's not Israel anymore. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. Only a Daddy would bust my chops for that. Okay, is this too loud or too low? you got to tell me. Too little, too little? Okay, okay. Um, they told me that uh, lunch is at, uh, you're going to get your lunch at 12 o'clock. You go get a dish real quick. You come right back. I keep teaching. Uh, what are you laughing at? Paul used to preach an average of five to eight hours at a day, on a time. Five to eight hours. He preached so long one time, the guy fell out of the window and he died, right? He goes, in the name of Jesus, you're healed. He came back up. He goes, okay, back to my text. <laughs> you understand? Then he says, you yell hallelujah to your daddy. <laughs> you study to show yourself approved unto God. Study to show who? Yourself, approved unto God. A workman, working through the word. A workman, who does not need to be what? Not need to be what? Ashamed, why? Because you know how to rightly divide the word of what? Truth. This is the word of truth. It is the only book in the world that tells you where a man comes from, what he did wrong, what he's going to get for it, and then where he's going. There's no other book in the library that's going to do that, right? So, pastor told you last week, it was his first announcement. He said, the preacher said, make sure you bring your Bible next week. Now, if you didn't bring your Bible, sit next to a Christian. 
No, actually, everybody, turn in your Bibles. They need them in China. Okay, you know what? Here's what's going to happen. We are going to go flying through the word in a number of ways. I'm going to start with 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And it's going to start this way. Go to verse 17. Now, Paul is making a final comment to having made many statements to the people about all of the people they want to follow because they want to be name droppers and gang members. I'm from Apollos. I'm from this one. I got baptized by this one. And they're all naming, right? Okay? And then Paul makes this amazing statement. You ready? Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. And not with fancy words of wisdom, lest the cross of Christ, the cross of Christ, be made of none effect. Let me explain what this means very quickly to you, okay? He did not send me to baptize. You know what that means? He didn't send me to start programs. That's what that's about. So many people go to a church, the first thing they want to do is walk in the back aisle and start looking on the little rack to see what kind of programs do they have here? What did they have here? What did they have here? And that's how they want to pick their church. Many people come to church. Watch this. I might catch you off guard. Did you come to church for a blessing? Shut up. No. You come to a church for only one reason. One reason only. Don't ever come for the second. Only one. You come to worship. You only come to worship. If you come for anything else, you came for the wrong reason. If you came to get something, you've been taking all week. You want to take again when you get here? You understand? I mean, you don't have to prove what a cheapskate you are. We already counted in the back after church. You know, you tip, you, you tip the waiter more than you tip God. You know, like he's the waiter. No, and he's not, or he would get tipped more. You're going to love me today. He did not come to start programs. He came to preach the gospel. And not with fancy, eloquent words of wisdom. Which, uh, this translation, I'm not sure what it is, but that's one way of saying it. What does that mean? He did not come to become popular. He didn't come so he can get people to like him, to become favored. No, 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 no. I'm not going to come to you and, and woo you and why you, ah. Yeah, although you already are from me, so don't worry. Only kidding. He didn't come to do that. He didn't come to start programs. He didn't come to become popular. He came to preach the gospel. That's it. And if he didn't, the cross of Christ is of none effect. I'm going to make a statement right now that might spin a couple of heads, but make sure you understand this. The moment you go beyond the cross, you begin to backslide. I've heard many comments over here. Linda and I came here on June the 11th to visit. June, yeah, because I had a little bit of business to settle up the next day in town. That was six months ago. Six months ago. Six months later now, for the first time, I get to stand here and talk to you. And you all look so beautiful today. So beautiful. The red section, the other section. <laughs> And don't make me pick out who I think is the best dress because you will have a problem. He's wearing a beautiful red shirt. No, man, all the guys out here, man, have fancy red shirts. <laughs> Why did he insist that people understood? Don't mistake me that I came here to start a program. And don't, mis don't mistake me that I, I came here so you can love my popularity. I came to preach the gospel. And here's what he said. Look at the next verse, 18. Because the message of the cross, everyone say message of the cross. You can't apply what you don't understand. If you don't know the message of the cross, you need to just zip it and get on your knees and get in the book. Because you will create more problems than you know. You know why? You are, listen, if you love Jesus, you already have a target on your back. But the devil is never going to bother you if he already knows. you got the message of the cross a little goofed up. You don't have it quite right. You're a little confused. You understand? 
So he looks forward to the people who want to be religious. And all the people who love me and that I know you. Hi, everybody out there. Linda and I are doing just what Papa said. I've been calling him Papa for years. Because many, many years ago, he became my spiritual father. So you hear me say, Mama, I love you. Papa, that's what I'm referring to in the most respectful way I can honor them to God as the mommy and daddy he gave me to move my spiritual life. So I hope I can share a little bit of this for you. Because the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are saved, being saved, you understand sanctification? You are saved and you are being, being, being saved. You are always continuously be being saved. So we're going to talk about sanctification in a few moments. But to those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Let me reread that message to you. You ready? The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. You ready? Let's remove the middle. The message of the cross is the power of God. Now, I'm not proof texting and I'm not trying to make the word of God say something different. Everybody say the word proof text. Say it again. Proof text. That's when somebody takes a single part of the Bible, they read it, and then they run their mouth for 30 or 40 minutes saying something all around it. Usually never what it actually meant. But they want to make their point. Paul said later, I believe in uh, chapter 14, I wish you all spake tongues as much as I do. I speak tongues more than you. See? So we all ought to be speaking in tongues. That's it. And then he talked for 45 minutes about why everybody has to speak in tongues. That's the bottom line. That wasn't Paul's point. His point was, but my love is more important than just that. But you, you, if you proof text, you cut out everything that God said so it only means what you say. Now today I'm going to give you a lot of stuff. We got a potluck after, so I'm giving you a lot of potluck message today. Some of you it will be the main course, some of you it might be the dessert, some the appetizer. But the one thing you better look forward to is you better get fat on the Word of God. Because if you don't, if you are too skinny on the Word of God, once again, the devil's not going to bother you because he knows why. You've just become one of his best allies. You know, it's like when somebody messes up on the other team, you go, hey, he's the best guy on our team. And he's playing for the other team? Well, the enemy says that every day. Oh, that's the best Christian on our team. Leave him alone. He doesn't study the Word. He doesn't meditate in the Word. He doesn't continually learn what the Word said. He doesn't know how to apply the Word. And then he goes on speaking and saying religious things. You know, God gives the best to those who wait on him. Right? What scripture is that? Which one is that? It's not. Unless you have the Bible that has the book of second opinions. Get it? If you don't know the word of God, first of all, let me start with this. If you don't carry a Bible and don't have a Bible on a regular basis with you, you're defenseless. Because while we have the shield of faith, the sword of the Spirit, the word of God is the sword of the Spirit. While all of the other, all of the other parts of God is used for... Did I just see William? Oh, yeah. We're in church, right? It's family, right? Oh, my gosh. Come here. Oh, my God. I love you. Is this you? <laughs> I can't wait to meet you. <laughs> this young man was my very first made black belt at 14 years old. Will you right now, what, 37, 38? Youth group, what, eight, nine years old? I was the, fir I was the first youth pastor here. Linda and I were here before. Oh, brother, I love you. Thank you for coming. Oh, I recognize that handsome guy next to you, too. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> and your lady. Thank you so much. Praise God. But you see what I just did? If you're, all, if you're all caught up in religion, if you're all caught up in your speech, 
I study to show myself approved unto God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word for me, not for you. I don't study for you. I don't write a study book, a religious book report, even though it might be true. Just a vessel, a hose. God is running his Holy Spirit through. And if you don't understand this, how do you apply it? You're crimping the hose all day long. Now, how are you going to do? Just drip, drip, drip. Not the power of God. It's not the power of God. Because Paul said what? Let's look at chapter 2. It's right there. It should be right next to chapter 1. It usually is. I did not come to you with excellence of speech and some wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. What? I determined to know nothing among you but Jesus Christ and him crucified. So from this day forward, as I'm so thrilled to be here, your brother was right, <laughs> got to bed at about 5 o'clock this morning, woke up at 8, got right here, and drove about 12 hours traveling, all totaled, and we did stop at Bucky's, yes. Yes, chop brisket on the board, yeah, yeah, we did it. I walked in and I yelled it, had to do it, and it was good. Sorry they didn't have any to bring home. See? He says, I'm determined to know nothing about you but Jesus Christ and him crucified. So anytime I may have the privilege and the honor to be up here with you, you better bring your Bible, you better bring a notepad, you want to bring a marker maybe to mark this thing up, write your notes, and then go back home and, what does it say? Test all things. Another translation says, prove all things. And then hold fast to that which is true. So if you don't test what I say and you just suck it up just because I'm up here or who's ever up here, pastor, I told you so, reverend, I got it right, doctor, I know it all, bishop, don't talk to me, and whoever they are, reverend, I never end. People, study to show yourself approved because you do not know how to apply what you don't understand. Let me give you a little more information on what that means. Knowledge. Say knowledge. knowledge. Knowledge is what you know. Knowledge is what you know. It's your knowledge. It's your academia. Wisdom. Say wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom is what you do with what you know. Wisdom. Knowledge is what you know, but the wisdom is what you do with it. The book says get knowledge, get wisdom, but most of all, get what? Ah, why does he say get understanding? Understanding is what comes to you over time as maturity. That's when you heard the statement, oh, I saw that coming a mile away. How did you see that coming a mile away? Because you should see the miles I've walked. Bloody, scraped knuckles, kicked, torn clothes, ripped pockets. This is a water line. And this is an iceberg sticking up out of the water. See that? How much percentage of that iceberg do you think is under the water? Hmm? Come on. 10%? 40%? Just imagine the last big glass of Pepsi Cola you had, or Coca Cola, or God knows what it was, full of ice. How much of that ice came busting out over the top of the glass? It stayed under, right? So probably 80, 90% is under the water. The Titanic didn't sink because of what they saw. They sunk because of what was under the water. Knowledge is what you know. Wisdom is what you do with it. But understanding, it's the depth. It's the depth. The depth of experience of living. That's why you have spiritual babies, you have spiritual young men, and you have spiritual fathers. Spiritual babies don't even know what's really happened until you tell them. And then they go sometimes without the proper care and love and support of what they need from a spiritual father. They go chasing angel wings. They go chasing gold dust. They go chasing laughing on the floor for God knows why. Then they start arguing over 
Christmas trees. That's a sin. The Christmas tree showed up for church anyway. I see a lot of empty seats that didn't show up. If you are moaning and whining and complaining about the Christmas tree or the Easter bunny or the baskets and the eggs, you have taken your eyes off the cross and you are too busy becoming a member of the 4P club. The pretenders, the performers, the persecutors, and the powders. And all they want to do is take their voting shoes, pick them up, and go home. This is not my church anymore. I can't believe the carpet is that color. I can't believe they put a Christmas tree in that thing. I gotta, 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 gotta. If you think you're hung up on worshiping the Christmas tree, when was the last time you got lost in Christ? When did you last get lost in Christ? Because once you get lost in Christ, I don't even care about that. So what? This is there. It's just a thing. It's going to burn up with everything else anyway at the end, right? So, so what? How are we doing on this side over here, okay? Give me a favor. Everybody stand up right here real quick. Stand up, quick. Up. Everybody, up. Good. Sit down. This section here, stand up. Come on. Up. Good. Sit down. This is over here. Everybody stand up. Good. Sit down. There they go. See, there's a, there's a moving and a wave of the Holy Spirit already in the church. I'm going to get mail for that one, too. Don't write me your complaints. Don't email me anything you disagree with unless you can prove to me why you think you tested it, you proved it, you checked it, you prayed about it, you fasted about it, you confirmed it with Pastor Amar, you went and checked it with another somebody else, and then you come to me and go, uh, Pastor Dominic, guess what? Um, that thing you said the other day, uh, this is what I find. But I'm going to tell you right in advance, uh, right up front. So I'm going to give away the hint. Don't let me catch you proof texting. Because if I catch you proof texting, oh, you're going to be sorry you even checked yourself. And it's not my place to be your Holy Spirit. Is that clear? I'm a sinner just like the rest of every single one of us. You put a swimming pool over here, and I'll take the first step. I'm going straight in. And if there's anybody here who can actually walk across it, please, this is yours. Not mine anymore. If you don't understand the basic instructions before leaving earth, how do you apply what you can't understand? People. We argue with other people about issues with God. Excuse me, did you just forget he's God? He owns you. He made you. You're going to argue about him? Who do you think you are? Who do we think we are? You just fall on our face. Fall on your knees. We were singing this. Fall on your knees. How many of you fell on your knees? How many people here think you're under the law? Good. How many think you're not under the law? How many don't know? <laughs> this reminds me, there are like three people in the whole world. You know what they are? People who make things happen, people who watch things happen, and people who go, what happened? <laughs> so if I ask you for a response, I already have a whole bunch of people that don't respond. They didn't show up. You want to join them? Right? Yes? Amen. Yesterday was my final martial arts class. I turned over the school to the new instructor. I tested all of my kids 100%. They all passed. You should have seen it, William. It was absolutely beautiful. I cried tears, all my kids hugging, beautiful pictures. Life moves on. But more importantly than anything, did I leave something in them that can make a difference? Yes. Amen. Their creed. Their creed. And number 10 says, my most important goal is to make God and my family happy and proud of me. I told my children every time, I love you. I love Jesus. Jesus loves you. I love Jesus. And this is children's church. We just get to do this while we're doing it. Period. That's right in the list with the Christmas tree. If you're going to get all hung up over... Uh, what happened in this culture and what happened in that culture? Stop taking your eyes off the cross. Which brings me to teach you something that, uh, William, I'm sorry, this one might be old for you, not 30 years old. Essentials and non-essentials. 
An essential, there's no negotiation. There's no discussion. It's fact, and that's the end of it. A non-essential, we can agree to disagree. You have to be baptized to be saved. I don't know where you get that in the Bible. Because, too bad for the guy in the cross next to Jesus. Boy, did he get a shaft. Get it? Because if you think you have to be baptized to be saved, that's just more works. And my Ephesians 2.8 says that my salvation is a free gift from God, not by works. So nobody can brag. People tell me all the time, what? I say, are you a Christian? Yeah, I've been baptized. I know they're probably religious. They're always going around claiming things that help them feel better. Do you do that? So now you know. So who's under the law? Anybody? Who lives under the law? You do? Good. Who does not live under the law? Okay, what happened to the rest of you? Did I just, I'll repeat what I just said for seven minutes. You're all under the law. Turn to Romans chapter 8. Go ahead. Romans chapter 8. If you were in 1 Corinthians, it's to the left. One book. Look at verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. You take your pick. You're under one law or the other. But all these people go, I'm not under the law. I'm not under the law. Yes, you are. But right now, you're proving which one I think you're under. Because look at the next verse. Look at number three. You ready? Here goes. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous, what? The righteous, what? Requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the Christmas tree. Set their minds on... Did you see what she was wearing? Oh my gosh, he didn't have a tie on. I can't believe it. He came to church in shorts. Thank God he came at all. If wardrobe was a requirement for getting into heaven... But for all of you, if it was, you're going. Because, <laughs> man, I tell you, I see some hot-looking dressed people here every time. We're all under the law, but are you under the law of sin and death, or are you under the law of the spirit of life? John 10, 10, Jesus said, I came to bring you life and what? Life abundant, more abundant. In the Greek, the word abundant there means overflowing, unexhaustible, beyond any measure you can even see a scratching of the surface. Hello? Come prepared. Drink on the job. I have a song I love to sing. Uh, first time I went to Teen Challenge, I started this song. It's a beautiful progression, uh, G, E minor, D, C. And uh, it starts out, I love to drink. You should have seen their faces. I said it again, I love to drink. A guy in the back stood up. I love to drink. And then I said, from the living waters of life. <laughs> yeah! The place went crazy. <laughs> Test all things. <laughs> do you know the doctrine of justification? Do you know the doctrine of sanctification? I can tell you, as Pastor Amar would possibly tell you, that 50% of the pastors right now today in the pulpit, all over the world, they're not even saved. And the other 50% that may be saved, about 98% of them only know half the gospel like most of the people sitting. But what does it say in Luke 6.40? You, 
Jesus said, no disciple. In the Greek, the word disciple means matetes. Say, matetes. Say, matetes. So if I say disciple, you say, it's all Greek to me. Matetes is the word disciple. The word disciple in the English language in our modern day means a learner. It's a learner. By definition and function as a verb, it's one who follows both the teaching and the teacher. And Jesus said, is that what it says? Oh, look, I got lucky. So, <clears throat> no disciple, no learner, no matetes is above his teacher. But when he has been perfectly trained, guess what? He's going to be like his teacher. So who are you latching on to? Who are you latching on to today? Yeah, you're latching on to Jesus, but right now you're sitting there listening to this donkey. Right? In the Bible, God spoke to a donkey. So that's what gives me hope. Hope. <laughs> My dear Hope. William's beautiful bride, Hope. And the babies do any day now, right? <laughs> Praise God. You must know who you follow. And you must know who they follow. And just because somebody says the word Jesus, Jesus in that day was one of the most popular names, like today is John, William, or in the 70s, Kimberly, or Denise, or, and in days to come, who knows what. But there's this popularity thing that goes on. But people, it's one thing to hear religious things, it's another thing to know what? The blesser. So don't worship the blessing. Worship the blesser. Clear? All right, let's go on just a little bit more. <clears throat> so what is, what is the problem why so many pastors only know half the gospel? It's very simple. And now I'm going to drive very hard, so pay very close attention. Squint your ears and listen closely. The point is this. Justification. You are justified when you say, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He went to the cross. He died for my sins. His blood paid the price for my sins. I believe that that's what he did for me. Hallelujah, I want to just be a sinner saved. Praise God. You have now been justified. Isn't that the gospel? Yes? Say yes. Good. That's half the gospel. You just learned 50% of the gospel. It goes beyond now getting saved. Now you're supposed to do what? Live out, hint, live out your salvation. How do you live it? Because unless you got lucky like the guy on the cross, or unless you got lucky like the guy in the deathbed going, if you believe in Jesus, please squeeze my hand, squeeze your hand, and he died. Lucky for them. But all the rest of you, you want to believe in the Lord Jesus? Hallelujah? Then you're going to walk out that door? What's next? Because all you left with is 50% of the gospel. Yes, you're saved. But now you need to go out there and live out that salvation. And how do you do that? That is the word sanctification. Sanctification is what separates you unto the work of God. How many here are how many here have received the baptism in the Holy Spirit? Ooh, ooh. I can't wait to preach again because you need to understand the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because if you have not received, please understand something. Salvation is God's gift to mankind. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is God's gift to his children who are saved. So you say, why do I need the baptism? I got the Holy Spirit in me when I got saved. Yes, you did. You did. Galatians 5, 22, 23. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Above these things, there's no law. Yes, there is. It's the law of what? Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That made me free from the law of sin and death. So I got a little thing with that line, but it is no law of carnality. There is no carnality that can challenge love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and so on. Get it? Your salvation, your sanctification, how you live and work out the word of God. 
So now I want to encourage you to understand a few simple things, and the Holy Spirit is going to deal with you right now. So put your seatbelts on, because otherwise you should be falling to the floor. You know if you don't read your Bible enough. You know if you don't praise him. You know if you are not giving all week. He's giving you help. He's giving you love and friendship with others. He's giving you money to pay the bills. He's giving you transportation. He's giving you something to wear so nobody has to laugh at what you look like. People, this is our one opportunity to come and tip the waiter. What's up? I say it like that because if you're stumbling in those areas, I don't call you out. It's never my place to embarrass you. I don't have to. Because in John 8, the Holy Spirit already promised me, the Holy Spirit will convict you of your sin. The Holy Spirit will convict you of your sloppy righteousness. The Holy Spirit will convict you to death and everything else that may come with it. So I want you to examine your heart. Get real with our Father, like Brother Simon. You say hallelujah if you know your daddy. And guess what? If you ain't calling him daddy or Abba Father, Abba means daddy, dada, papa. Maybe there are some parts of your relationship that need some good girding up, some good shoring up, some good bracing up. Fair? So you know this. So <clears throat> I'm going to simply end this by telling you, if you don't know the basic instructions before leaving earth, then while you are here, you may be wreaking more havoc than you realize. You may be the best ally the enemy has. And you don't know it. Yes, you love Jesus. Nobody is saying you're not saved. But why the baptism in the power of the Holy Spirit? Why the baptism in the Spirit? Because once you receive the baptism in the Spirit of God, that is for your power of service. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is what gives you the power of service. I'm not, I'm not challenging the fruit of the Spirit. That's what comes with the package of the Holy Spirit, moving the spirit of Adam out and bringing the spirit of God in, the Holy Spirit, bam, he comes with all of that beauty. But if you, listen, in, in, in Romans chapter 12, God the Father gave you gifts at the conception. Romans chapter 12, God has already blessed the baby in your hope with gifts. 1 Corinthians 13, the Holy Spirit, now that you're saved, gave you gifts. Ephesians chapter 4, Jesus Christ has called you to a position of some sense of leadership. And you must do that with power. Amen. The moment you get out of those seats and you walk out that door, you are an ambassador of Christ Amen. or you are an ally of trouble. So, I'm going to make this very serious. If the worship team wants to come back up and play, I want to pray for you. For those of you who, at the end of service, you feel like you want to stay longer and longer, but for the rest of you, let me make it very clear right now. Number one, if you know at this very moment if your heart stopped, I don't know if I'm going to heaven. Maybe I'm not going to. You're probably not. But if you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. Amen. And to you people, have you received the baptism of the power of the Holy Spirit so that you have completed the ability for your sanctification to work out your salvation so that you can be living out this manual of God. So other people can read you because for most people, guess what? You'll be the only Bible they read today. If anybody has even the hint of a doubt, I don't know if I'd go to heaven. I'm standing in front of God, he says, why should I let you into heaven? Well, I gave a lot of, none of that counts. All he wants to know is what did you do with my son? And if you don't have that locked down, then today is your day. Today is your day of salvation. You know you're saved, you're not sure you're saved, and then the rest of you, you want more power from God to serve, to serve. If that's the case, then you want the baptism and the power of the Holy Spirit. You want to say, God, please fill me with this. I want to renew and refresh my life. So this front is open, it's free of charge, but it will cost you your life. And never confuse the price with the cost. The price could be cheap, but the cost could be horrible.
But right now, you know where you are, and I will not embarrass anyone. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. One of them, both of them, whatever you got. If you are not sure that you are saved, I'm not going to embarrass everybody. Close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. You don't have to be looking around, pointing fingers. Close your eyes. If you do not know if you are saved, you're not sure, you think you probably might be, but you're not really sure. And you want to know if you're sure. Raise your hand. I promise I'm not going to embarrass you. Raise your hand. Okay, thank you. Hands, 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 hands. Praise Jesus. Put your hands down. Right now, you know you know Jesus. You love Jesus. You praise Jesus. But you know that there is weaknesses. There are blind spots. They're going on in your life every day, and you just manage to bulldoze them aside so you can move on. People, if you want to get rid of some things that don't belong there, and I'm not saying you're going to become a religious prig. Go home and study what that word means. But you will say, Lord, I really want to clean up my act, but I'm depending on you to clean me up a little more from this thing I struggle with. Let me see your hand. Anybody there? Good. Hello. Hands, 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 hands. Put your hands down, please. You love Jesus with all your heart. You have passion. But you know you had do not, you have never knowledgeably known. I have never received the baptism in the power of the Holy Spirit. I have not received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I want to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Who are you are? Raise your hand, let me see. Because if you know you haven't received them, because you'll know you did, and then you didn't. All right, put your hands down. Thank you. I promised I wasn't going to embarrass you. If you raised your hand, if you raised your hand, this is the challenge. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father. Does that not terrify you? If you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father. I promised I won't embarrass you, but if you raised your hand and you have this situation in your life that is between you and the Lord, right now where you are, I want to pray with you. And everybody, so there is no one person's voice that has to be alone, we are all going to pray together. But you people who know you raised your hand, I'm asking you. I'm commissioning you. I'm begging you. I'm beseeching you. Mean this with all of your heart. Right there. Dear Father God, let me hear you. Dear Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry for my sins, the way that I have lived, the things that I have done. Please cleanse me with your power of blood that paid for my sins. I commit my life to you. I recommit my life to you. Lord, I commit my life to you for the first time. Please come and fill my heart, fill my mind, Fill my life with your truth, with your power, with your grace, with your love and your mercy. And I pray all of this. I pray all of this. Say it. I pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap of hands. Give the Lord a clap of hands. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.